Hello children welcome back in this video we are going to learn the poem comprehension and figure of speech for the poem the secret of the machines by rudyard kipling in the previous video we have learned the secret of the machines that the explanation of each stanza in the previous uh, session in this session let us learn poem comprehension and figure of speech so before that let us have the short recap and before that let me tell you few tips regarding the improvement of your learning curve so this is the period where you are the organizers that is teachers are sending uh, the video lessons according to their schedule you are the children who have to use it properly you have to schedule your session you have to start your session from 4 o'clock that is from 4 to 6 you have to learn the difficult subject if you think physical science as your difficult subject or biological science you as your difficult subject or maths as your difficult subject you have to start from this morning session the early morning session you have to start with your difficult uh, subjects so first subject which i allocate uh, which i suggest is uh, biological science so let it be uh, from 4 to 6 so in the session how you have to learn for it, it is applicable for all subjects that is first you have to survey the content which you are going to learn from 4 to 6 then after that you have to question so you have to frame questions then after framing the questions you have to find answers by reading then after that you have to recite it you have to understand the meaning of the content then after that uh, you have to recite it so if you find a difficult in understanding please uh, listen to the video which the teacher has sent to you already then after that you have to review it that is you can attend a mock test uh, in those topics that is every paragraph you have to in every paragraph you have to frame question and after that you have to uh, find answer and you have to attend test in those questions so though for those questions you have to write test so this is the learning process so that when you do like this your content will be well understood and it will get well stored in your brain and easily you can reproduce even in the later hours next for session 4 to 6 i gave you then let it be biological science for example only let it be a biological science and from 6 to 8 o'clock you can have short break for having tea that is uh, from 6 uh, um, to 7 uh, you can take another 5 minutes in order to have tea or uh, um, you can uh, uh, do exercise so you can jog then after that again come back and you can uh, resume at 6:10 then from 6:10 to 7 you have to learn physical science so in the say by using same methodology you have to learn physical science then after that from 8 to 9:30 you can have break in order to have your breakfast then after that from 9:30 to 10:30 and from 10:30 to 11:30 you can learn max you can work out all the problems for that day session then you can attend mock test so you can learn max then after that so every day video lessons will be sent to you uh, from the school so what you are supposed to do means you have to watch those videos and you have to 
uh, attend as test and you have to send it to your teachers let it be till 12:45 that is 11:30 till 12:45 you have to attend the test which was given by the teachers from the school so you had to listen to their video and you had to attend as test so even if it extends no problem one subject you can attend from um, 11:30 to 12:45 then uh, other subject no if uh, teachers are sending two video lessons uh, that is for subjects uh, two subjects then you can uh, attend as test till 12:45 for one subject in the morning session then after that after having lunch what you can do means you can attend uh, you can listen to the video of the other subject and you can send us home test then after that till 4:30 let this process go on then again at 5 o'clock you have to resume what is the subject remaining social science and social science you have to learn from 5 to 7 then after that from 5 to 7 you have to learn social science then after that from 7 to 8 you have to learn the language subjects that is tamil or english if it is tamil you have to learn from 7 to 8 then have your supper then after that uh, from 9 to 10 you had to learn english so you had to like the same way 3 uh, yes q 3 or technique you had to use for all these subjects so this is the way you have to work during uh, this period you are the organizers and you have to assign task for you and you have to work accordingly in order to become successful because you are the people going to appear board exams so the 10th standard children this is your first stepping stone okay uh, let me continue my session we have taken from the orbed and the mine we were melted in the furnace and the pet we were cast and wrought and hammered to design we were cut and filed and tooled and gouged to fit that is here machines are speaking so machines are speaking and they were taken from the ore bed and the mine we were melted in the furnace and the pet so they were melted in the furnace and the pet and they were cast thrown and wrought beaten and hammered to design then they were cut and filed so filed means smoothed and shaped and measured to fit here metals like gold silver so you wear uh, gold ornaments isn't it so they are in different designs and different shapes and different ornaments are made so how they are made means they are taken from the ore bed and the mine then after that they were melted in the furnace and the pit and they are um cast and wrought so like hard metals like iron they are beaten and hammered in order to design and after that they were cut and filed so filed means they were smoothened they are they were um, softened and shaped and measured to fit some water coal and oil is all we ask and a thousandth of an inch to give us play and now if you will set us to our task we will serve you four and 20 hours a day so what the machines uh, convey us means they need only some water coal and oil in order to run so machines need fuel in order to work so for example uh, steam engines were used in 18 uh, in uh, 
एटींथ सेंचुरी एंड नाइनटीन सेंचुरी ड्यूरिंग दैट टाइम वाट इज रक्वयर्ड इन ऑर्डर टू मेक द स्टीम इंजिन वर्क मीन इट इज कोल नव डेज वी यूज इलेक्ट्रिसिटी ऑयल फ्यूएल वाटर इन ऑर्डर टू मेक द मशीन वर्क ये कॉर् देन अदर मोटार वेहिकल नीड पेट्रोल और डीजल टू वर्क सो लाइक वाइज ईवन वी हेव एलेक्ट्रिक ट्रेन सो दे रन विद एलेक्ट्रिसिटी सो लाइक वाइज ड्यूरिंग दोज पीरियड वेन द पोएट रोड दिस पोम नो दट इज रेड किपलिंग पीरियड Uh, only steam engines are uh, the locomotives um, uh, that is steam engines were used for the steam engines what is required means coal is required as fuel they does not they do not re, uh, need in large quantities they need them only in small quantity in order to work that is and a thousandth of an inch to give us play that is 1 by 1000th of an inch to give us play they in order to work they need only those fuels in small quantities and now if you will set us to our task when they were set to work by the humans they will work all for 24 hours a day so per day we have 24 hours so the poet has exaggerated uh, and uh, the machines they themselves say that they will serve us for and 20 hours um, uh, a day that is all the 24 hours they will work it seems and we can pull and haul and push and lift and drive we can print and plow and weave and heat and light we can run and race and swim and fly and dive we can see and hear and count and read and write here are the tasks done by the machines so what and all the tasks they can do they can pull they can haul what is haul so uh, that is uh, it is a uh, pulling with a great force so we can pull and haul and push and lift and drive we can print and plow and weave and heat and light so we use machines like pulley then we use uh, cranes and we use um, knives like simple machines like knives scissors in order to push and uh, we use vehicles to drive and we use printers to print and we use Uh, tractors to plow and we use um, power looms to weave and heaters to heat and lighting machines to light and we can also run and race that is the machines can run and race and swim and fly so they we use um, a ship boat and even aeroplane uh, in order to fly and um swim swim and fly and we can see and hear and count and read and write so we can also uh, use uh, various machines in order to see and we use hearing aids in order to hear and we use castron in order to count uh, the uh, money and we can also read by using braille and we use other machines uh, like uh, computers or uh, scanners in order to read and we uh, write by using the writing machine like typewriters computers or use it to write but remember please the law by which we live that is we should know the law of physics by which the machines work we are not built to comprehend a lie that is they are not built to understand a lie told by us that is um, we humans have uh, ability to um, lie character to lie so when we tell a lie the, that lie cannot be understood by the machines we can neither love nor pity nor forgive 
we care that is they don't have any emotional feelings they don't have any emotional feelings whenever we make mistakes in uh, handling them they will be dangerous we have to face the consequences that is we will die next answer so finally he concludes by saying though our smoke may hide the heavens from our eyes it will vanish and the stars will shine again because for all our power and weight and size we are nothing more than children of your brain so what he says is what the machines what the machines say is the smoke may hide the heavens Uh, from the machines what comes means smoke may come and sometimes it hide the sky here heavens means it uh, he means only the sky from your eyes from our eyes and it will vanish it will get disappeared and again we can see the clear sky with stars shining brightly so it will vanish and the stars will shine again because for all our power and weight and size they have huge power and uh, weight they have great mass and they have they are with great size we are nothing more than children of your brain so they conclude that when compared to human brain we are nothing it is the human brain which creates them they conclude that they are the children of the human brain and they are greater than them so the poem ends with the statement that machines although capable of great deeds are still nothing more than creations of the human brain they are the creations of the human brain so let me give the figure of speech what rhyme scheme is employed in this poem means it is ab ab in order to give the rhythmic effect the poet has written in such a way that uh, it follows the entire poem follows the rhyme scheme ab ab so for example let me read the rhyming words in each stanza mine design pet fit so mind design follows the same rhyme um, uh, it sounds similar pet and fit uh, follows the same uh, sound similar so here the rhyme scheme employed is a b a b likewise for second stanza ask task play day so it follows the same rhyme scheme that is a b a b the rhyming words are ask task play day likewise drive light dive right so here drive dive sounds similar light right sounds similar so the rhyme scheme followed is a b a b live lie forgive die so live forgive sound similar lie die sound similar so a b a b likewise we have words eyes again size brain so eyes size sound similar again brain sound similar so the rhyme scheme followed is a b a b so i told you about the rhyming words and rhyme scheme now let me uh, tell you the alliteration the figure of speech that is alliteration here the letters uh, alliterated or that is um, f is alliterated then t is alliterated in these two stanzas 
In the first answer, look at the fourth line. We were cut and filed and tooled in gauge to fit. So here, F sound is alliterated. Filed, fit. So the figure of speech employed in the fourth line is alliteration. Likewise, to task. So here, the figure of speech employed here is alliteration because T sound is alliterated. Likewise, in the third stanza, P sound is alliterated. First line, P sound is alliterated. Even in second line, P sound is alliterated. Pull, push, print, plow. And in second line, W sound is alliterated. V, weave. So, when the repetition of uh, consonant sound, we have to employ the figure of speech alliteration. Even in the third line, run, race. So, R sound is alliterated, so alliteration. And likewise, in the fourth stanza, first line, la, live. So, L sound is alliterated, so alliteration. Neither, nor. N sound is alliterated, so uh, alliteration. Neither, nor. Likewise, S sound is alliterated, stars shine. Star shine. So, alliteration. So, likewise, what? let us know what is assonance. When vowel sound is uh, repeated, then we can call it as assonance. All we ask. Ah. So, vowel sound is alliterated, repeated in the verse or the line. Then we can call it as assonance. And here, we were, we were, we were, we were. Words or a word or phrase is repeated in the same line or in the consequent line. Then we can call it as anaphora. We were, we were, we were, we were. So what figure of speech is employed here means anaphora. We will serve you 4 and 20 hours a day. So what figure of speech is employed here means hyperbole. So here something is exaggerated. That is when a machine is set to work, to a task, uh, without rest, they will work for us for all the 24 hours a day. So here something is exaggerated. Without rest, uh, the machines will work it seems. So something is exa exaggerated. So uh, what figure of speech is employed here means hyperbole. And next, imagery. We can see and hear and count and read and write. That is, some visual effect is created in the minds of the reader when we read this line. It gives the picture of seeing, hearing, counting and reading and writing in the minds of the reader. So what figure of speech is employed here means imagery. Next, personification. Uh, that is, if a human character is attributed to the machines, then what figure of speech is employed here means that is personification. Even in all stanza, uh, the poet refers the machines to uh, we. So that is, uh, uses the pronoun we. So uh, we for whom we will be using uh, for the humans. So... Uh, all the lines are examples for um, uh, personification. So particularly this line, we are not built to comprehend a lie. That is, they are not built to understand a lie. So who will have the understanding? Only the human beings. So here human character is personified to a machine. So the figure of speech employed here is Personification. Next, connotation. So, what is connotation? So, when suggestion is given beyond the expression, then it is called as connotation. That is, something is uh, uh, expressed beyond their expression. For example, actually, here, though our smoke may hide the heavens, here, heavens, uh, he, the poet refers to the sky, not the heavens. So, beyond 
what he expresses he had he has given the another word that is heavens he used another word heavens in order to denote sky so the figure of speech employed here is connotation so it suggests beyond what it expresses though our smoke may hide the heavens from your eyes connotation sometimes it will get vanished disappeared and the stars will shine again because for all our power and weight and size we are nothing more than the children of your brain the figure of speech employed in the first line of the last stanza is connotation okay so let us uh, learn the poem comprehension we were taken from the old bed and the pine we were melted in the furnace and the pit we were cast and wrought and hammered to design we were cut and filed and tooled and gouged to fit who does we refer to in first stanza whether human beings or machines here it refers to machines we refers to refer to machines who are the speakers and listeners of this poem machines or the speakers and human beings or the listeners what metals are obtained from the ores and mines metals like iron copper lead gold silver even aluminum are obtained from the ores and mines mention a few machines which are hammered to design machines namely steam engine the locomotive tractor truck crane bulldozer and iron clad ships were hammered to design mention the names of a few machines that run on water coal or oil as i told you steam engines work using coal so likewise the machines that run on water coal oil include cars trucks aeroplane trains the floating grain mill water powered fire alarm steam engines modern diesel engines and container ships they all run using oil water and coal mention a few machines used for pulling pushing lifting driving printing plowing reading and writing pulley for pulling knife for pushing crane for lifting car for driving printer for printing tractor for plowing braille for reading and typewriter for writing so it is hidden typewriter for writing or machines humble to accept the evolution of a uh, human brain why yes machines accept that they are the children of human brain they have to work as per the instructions of human brain so they humbly accept it what feelings are evoked in us by the machines in this poem so finally the poet concluded that they are the creation of human brain they are the children of the human brain so by hearing those words we uh, sympathize that is we have the feelings of sympathy humility compassion and vanity or evoked in us by the machines in this poem and a thousandth of an inch to give us play which of the following do machines want to prove from this line once machines are fed with fuel they take a very long time to start once machines are fed with fuel they start quickly once machines are fed with fuel they start quickly this is the correct one so whenever we feed the machines 
With fuel, they start quickly. You might have observed it. And now, if you will set us to our uh, task, we will serve you 4 and 20 hours a day. So, who does the pronoun you refer to here? The pronoun you refers to human beings in the bow lines. Whose task is referred to as our task here? Our task is referred to the task of the machines. Our task is referred to the task of the machines. Open conditional class is used in the given line. Why is the future tense will set, will serve used both in the if class and in the main class? That is future tense. That is what is the given line? If you will set us to our task, this is if class, which is the main class, we will serve you 4 and 20 hours a day. So in the if class, he gives the definite truth. That is the uh, reason in, is that the machines are expressing a definite truth when they are given a task in the if class. He has uh, given the truth that if they are given a task, they will perform no matter what they are instructed. So however they are instructed, they will work. It does not matter. The second, the second reason is that the choice is given to us. If we choose to give them a task, they will do it. If we don't, then they don't do it. So, unless we give them a task, they never work. We have to set the task to them so they work accordingly. And now, if you will set us to our tasks, we will serve you 4 and 20 hours a day. Do the machine serve us 24 hours a day? Yes, the machine serve us for 24 hours a day. They, as they never get tired, they keep running as long as they are fed with water, coal and oil. Rewrite the given lines with the ending 365 days a year. And now, if you will set us to our task, we will serve you six, uh, 65 and 300 days a year. That is 365 days a year. That is uh, a, a day consists of how many hours? 24 hours. So per year, 365 days. So all the 365 days, they will work. So by looking at the line, we will serve you 4 and 24, 20 hours a day. That is, we come to know that machines will work for 365 days a year. So we all know what is rhyme scheme. The rhyming pattern that is created at the end of lines of poetry. So, for example, Mary had a little lamb, its fleece as white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. Here, lamb, snow, went, go. If the poem does not have a rhyme scheme, it is considered to be free verse. But look at these lines. Here, which are the lines which sound similar, which are the words that sound similar, Snow go. So the rhyme scheme employed here is A, B, C, B. Alliteration. The use of the same beginning consonant sound in a line or verse. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled pepper. Here P sound is alliterated. So what figure of speech employed here means alliteration. Personification. Giving human qualities to animals or objects. Look at the object here. The object is dancing. The tree um, danced back and forth in the wind. So who will dance? Only the human will dance. But here this character is attributed to the plants. So the trees 
So the figure of speech employed here is personification. Anaphora, the repetition of a word or phrase at the beginning of classes. Uh, learning is everything. Learning is magical. Learning is life. So here the phrase learning is, learning is, learning is, is repeated. So what figure of speech employed here means anaphora. So let us see the figure of speech, uh, speeches which are employed in these lines. We were taken from the orbit and the mine. We were melted in the furnace and the pit. We were cast and wrought and hammered to design. We were cut and filed and tooled and gorged to fit. So here we were. Those phrases are repeated in the consequent lines of uh, first answer. So what figure of speech is employed here means anaphora. Mind, design, fit, pit. So these are the rhyming words. Rhyme scheme employed here means A, B, A, B. We were cut and filed and tooled and gorged to fit. Here F sound is alliterated. So the figure of speech employed here is alliteration. Next. Fleet, fleet, sweep by sleeping geese. So here the repetition of a centered vowel sounds in a series of words. So here what figure of speech is employed here means a synonym. That is when the uh, vowel sound is repeated in a series of words in the given line then uh, what figure of speech is employed means a synonym. What is hyperbole? When something is exaggerated, then uh, what figure of speech employed in that line means it is figure of uh, hyperbole. He was huge. He had to be the most gigantic. Sorry, gigantic. We have to uh, pronounce as gigantic sixth grader that ever lived. What makes this an exaggeration? Can you think of another exaggeration? That is, he um, means that he is very fat. So something is exaggerated. So what figure of speech employed here means it is hyperbole. Some water, coal and oil is all we ask. Ah, that is vowel sound is uh, alliterated. That is repeated. Ah, ask. All ask. Assonance. So the figure of speech employed here is assonance. And what are the rhyming words? Ask, task, play, day. What rhyme scheme is followed here means A, B, A, B. And now if you will set us to work our task. Do task. So alliteration, then we will serve you 4 and 20 hours a day. So here the figure of speech employed in the last line of this stanza is hyperbole. What are elements of imagery? Writers and poets use elements of imagery. That is it uh, gives the picture in the minds of the reader. When we read that line, that picture will be in our mind. So in order to emphasize a point, the poet ha has used this element that is imagery to help the reader better relate, understand and picture a thought or offer a new perspective. Maybe use it to emphasize a point. We can pull and haul and push and lift and drive. So here, P sound is alliterated and W sound is alliterated. Print and plow P sound is uh, alliterated. W, V, weave. So uh, W sound is alliterated and we can run and race. R sound is alliterated. We can hear, we can see and hear and count and read and write. So it brings us the visual effect. That is, it brings the uh, seeing, hearing, counting and reading and writing ability of the machines in the minds of the reader. Here, we can, we can, we can. So here, 
The figure of speech employed here is anaphora. That is the phrase is repeated in all the four lines of the stanza. And we can see and hear and count and read and write imagery. Rhyming words here are dive, dive, drive, dive, light, right. Rhyme scheme followed here is A, B, A, B. And we have another uh, figure of speech that is personification. We can pull and haul and push and lift and drive. These are all the human qualities which are attributed to the machines. So the figure of speech employed here is personification. Then I told you the literated words. Next, but remember please the law by which we live, here L sound is alliterated and we are not built to com comprehend a lie. So this is uh, personification. What figure of speech employed in the second line of this stanza means it is personification. We can neither love nor pity nor forgive. Here N sound is alliterated and if you make a slip in handling us, you die. So. Uh, we are not built to comprehend a lie, personification, live, forgive, lie, die, rhyming words, rhyme scheme, A, B, A, B. But remember, please, the law by which we live. L sound is alliterated. Neither, not. So here, N sound is alliterated. Next, connotation. What is connotation? So as I told you, it suggests beyond what it expresses. So look at the picture. She is my baby. That is, it denotes a small kid. So we can call it as denotation. And look at the another picture. So here, she is my baby. That is, it refers to the girlfriend. It does not refer to a small baby. It refers to the girlfriend. So, this is something which is sub suggested beyond what it expresses. So, the figure of speech employed here is connotation. Though our smoke may hide the heavens from your eyes, the figure of speech employed here is connotation because here, Heavens, it, it does not denote heaven, it denotes a sky. It suggests beyond what it expresses. So, the figure of speech employed here is connotation. And the rhyming words here are eyes, size, again, brain. And the rhyme scheme followed here is AB, AB, stars, shine, alliteration. I hope you might have understood this uh, session and definitely you will learn uh, poem comprehension and figure of speech and by using machine lot of uh, smoke come out and because of that our environment is polluted we have to take steps in order to eradicate all those. Thank you for watching.